what's going on YouTube? Q from Motor City Man, and today I'm going to talk about three things I hate about my 2019 Mustang GT. So I got a base Mustang, so it doesn't have a lot of options, so please keep that in mind, because the, the premium has a few options that I don't, and most of the things I hate are exclusive to the base only. So there's nothing on the outside of the car. Everything that I hate is on the inside of the car. Outside, they're pretty much the same. I do have these wheels, though. Black wheels, but that's not what I hate. I actually love those. That'll be another video. Everything I hate is right here in the driver's seat. So let's go in the car and check it out. Well, the first thing that I hate is right here in the cluster. And this is what I hate the most about the Mustang. Every time I start the car, I want to be in track mode for the exhaust, the active exhaust. So every time I start the car, it defaults to normal or quiet, but I never have it in quiet. I don't see why anybody would ever choose quiet to ride around in, maybe for a headache. But for track mode, I'm always in track mode. And the thing that happens with track mode for the exhaust, so if you turn the car off, so the cluster goes off. And if I turn it back on, it goes back to the setting screen. Exhaust mode, it reverts back to normal every time. So if I wanna do a cold start in normal mode, I can't just automatically do it from the last save settings. It doesn't save from the last time. So if I want to start in track mode or sport mode, I would have to uh, turn the car off, go to accessory mode, blah, blah, go back to settings, exhaust, go to track mode, and then start the car. And I don't like doing that because I'm going to do that every single time I drive the car. Track mode just sounds so good to me. and I'll, I just don't drive without it, it's that good. It should be there by default, or at least it should say. And it even does that on the GT Premiums. And that's what I hate most about this car. All right, so the number two thing that I hate the most about this car, and it's something that I think there is a mod for on American Muscle, but it is the God awful. The radio, the screen, all of this, all these buttons, like it's, it's not necessary at all just way too many buttons I'm not gonna call anybody with this pad I don't even memorize phone numbers anymore that's like something it's gonna be a lost art like memorizing phone numbers I know my number my wife's and 911 that's it and these buttons are okay but I feel like they could have took half these buttons away the radio media that's fine equalizer that's okay but it's not even a lot to that it's just four options options button that's needed there's one for like this could have been in the options menu the time mode or just the time options i don't know why that's there apps these apps are probably going to be trash on this sync one not going to lie about that we got phone settings you can turn the screen off that could be useful but I don't use it. I always have the screen on. I'm always in Bluetooth audio. And it's, that's where it always stays. And maybe if I make a phone call or if my Bluetooth doesn't connect automatically when I start the car, I'll go to radio just because I want to hear some music. I'm always listening to music. But And this screen is tiny too. It's probably four inches going across diagonally. If I had the premium, this wouldn't be a problem at all. They have Sync 3. And Sync 3 is a much better system. It's a larger screen. It's touch screen. And yeah, this this isn't good at all. I mean, it's responsive. And it actually it has crashed on me uh, like two or three times too. And I only had 3,000 miles on the car. So it's, for the most part, it works. But I think Sync 3 is a better system than this. And this has been around for a while. So it should be close to perfect. For the most part, I like this down here. It's easy to read, easy to select what you want. And it's just a simple layout down here. But this is just a nightmare. 
All right, so for comparison, we got the Flex here. And this has Sync 3. And this works pretty good. You want me to move that mic? So this, this screen is pretty good. Turn the audio on, it's pretty responsive. Just a nice touch screen. Way less buttons now here. Big volume knob. And all these knobs can be replaced by the steering wheel controls. Like steering wheel controls are very helpful in these cars. I hate that the climate control is in here. Maybe I should start the car to see these. Yeah, everything's off right now. Climate control. It just switched to nighttime mode because it's in the garage and the lights are on. And then it's got all the options. Big menu. It's got Android Auto, CarPlay in here if I want it. Audio. I can switch sources. AM, FM, Sirius. I don't. I don't even recall seeing a Series XM in the Mustang. CD player, Bluetooth would always have. I got the phone menu. Everything is just big and easy to use. And it's not that it's unusable in the Mustang, but this is just better. It's like an eight inch display. And the same system comes in the Mustang. And this is really good. All right, now I'm back in the Mustang. And the other thing I hate about all these buttons, all these steering wheel controls, it's like 20 buttons on here. It was like 10, but that's still a lot of buttons. Like the only ones I use, volume up, volume down, track skip. Rarely mute, I just go to the knob if I wanna quickly turn it down. Don't use cruise control because people suck driving around here, maybe on a road trip, but not around the city. Don't use any of this at all. And I use this daily to turn everything to track mode. So I have to go there because they don't have a save feature. And that's all I hate about these buttons. So we're going to get on to the next thing I hate after this drive. About to go with one the Harley Davidson. So see you in a bit. The rear view camera is barely even usable. I'm like pulling out the driveway. And that's so small. I don't even use it to be honest. I use it when I'm backing into a parking spot just to tell if I'm about to, to hit a curb like this. I'm just going to use it as a reference. And that's it. Alright, so the final thing, thing number three that I hate about this car is the audio system. In my honest opinion, it's trash. I mean, it's livable and it can be upgraded, but I think there, every other car that I've ridden in had a better sound system. I, Ford just in general, their sound system was garbage. I don't even know who the supplier is for this audio system, but my family, they have a lot of Fords, and even my, I had a 2012 Mustang, and they had the shaker system, and it was, it was okay, it was decent at best, but it's nothing, like the clarity of it, it isn't that good, the highs aren't high, the lows aren't low, it's just okay, it's just like a basic one, and this is even worse than that, I get music, it's, it's nothing, it's not super crisp, not super loud, it's okay, I'm probably gonna upgrade that at some point, but the, uh, the premium systems, they uh, they got a new supplier, which is Harman, and Harman makes some really good audio. They have Revel in the Lincoln, and they also have B&O, Harman Kardon, that's all their stuff, and it's a pretty good system. And I think the new, like the 2019, maybe 2018 Mustang has B&O, and that's a really good, uh, that's a really good system, and Harman bought them out. I know Audi, BMW, and uh, Mercedes, they all use B&O, Bong and Aloofs, and if I'm pronouncing that's right. But that's a pretty good system. And I haven't heard it in the Mustang yet, but I would assume that's good. But that's what separates the GT from the base. And that would make it worth it. Is it like three, four, five thousand dollars worth it to get the GT? No, because I can just go to a, a car audio place and get some better speakers and go on American Muscle and get a touchscreen. But I'm I don't have to have the touch screen. Like, this is fine for what I'm gonna do, because so I'm only gonna use my steering wheel controls. All I do is skip tracks, and I can answer a phone call with these buttons and end them. I don't use the voice activated anything at all, because I, I just hate talking to machines, and they they never understand me on the first try anyway, so that point is moot for me, and I'm not gonna use it. So, I don't know if this will even pick up on the camera but this is some clips from the radio just how the audio is see you there the michigan lottery is stuffed 
jammed, get in your and cramped. And let me roll my windows down. Because normally when I roll the windows down, like it's barely adequate. I like riding with the windows down just to get some fresh air. But like with the windows down and cruising around at normal speeds, like I can I can hear the radio, but I wanted to overpower the wind noise. So the windows down now. Following wine up there. So. Cool auto parts store in the city. Uh, get in the door free at Ryan's Pick Apart. Yeah, that's right. Ryan's Pick Apart is waiving all entrance fees. Pull your own auto parts and save at Ryan's on Hubble in Detroit. Open seven days a week. Lowest prices guaranteed. Detroit, wake up with the Tom Jonah Morning Show. 6 till 10 a.m. right here on the station playing all Detroit's classic and new R&B music. 105.9 Kiss FM. So yeah, as you can see, it's not horrible, but it doesn't stand out like the tweeters. They aren't extremely well. They're just, they're just okay, and that's okay for the the price point of this car. I guess it's not meant to be that, but if I could change something, it's definitely going to be the speakers because it, it could be better. It's just all right. So that's all what I love, man. Well, no. So that's all what I hate about the Mustang. Thank you all for watching. Dropping wine off up here at Harley Davidson. Ran into a meet, which I didn't expect to be at. But that's all for this video. Catch you all next one. Because we're going to be out here doing all those crazy